A very good morning from Port Aventura Park here at Port Aventura World in Salou, Spain. Where we're here is April 2018 and it's good to be back at the park after a year. I'm here with Alex Crump. Hello. And there he is, you might have seen our travel vlog, make sure you check it out. It's a budget trip this one. Uh, we've got a budget flight over there, 12 99 with Ryanair. We're staying in a budget hotel, about a half an hour walk from the park. And also we've bought our two day ticket, which was about 52 pounds, wasn't it, back home? Uh, but here, here's another bargain for you. If you've got a Blackpool Pleasure Beach season pass, this might seem really random, but you actually get a day's free entry to Port Aventura. We're not joking. To the park, this park. To this though. park, yeah. You don't get a park hopper. Uh, you can't do the water park. You can't do Ferrari land. Only to Port Aventura Park itself. And uh, yeah, there you go. Welcome to Port Aventura's vlog. And uh, all you need to do if you've got that is head to guest services, which is on the right hand side at the entrance. And uh, you get a free day at the park. And then run away in the back office with your pass and then come back. Yeah, I, I, well, she's photocopied it. I think she's going for a ride on she's icon. Going for an icon. <laughs> yeah. That's what she's waiting for. <laughs> but uh, there you go. What are, you, what are your first impressions then of, of Port Aventura? It's really lovely. And I said to Sean, even walking into the into the zone where you, you park your cars, it, it, it was just lovely seeing seeing Red Force. I mean, we saw Shambhala last night. We were driving from the airport. It's the first lovely. impact of Shambhala though, is when you see it from from this angle here. You know, it looks gorgeous. And obviously, Port Aventura is home to probably one of the best selection of rides there is in Europe. I mean, you've got the tallest and fastest roller coaster in Europe. Uh, Red Force, of course. You've got the predecessor to that, which was Shambhala. Uh, Furious Baco, there's some great rides at this park, there really is. Dragon Khan, Stampede, Hurricane Condor, so much to see. We're going to be doing both parks. And uh, yeah, it isn't Alex's first time though, but it's his first time doing everything because he came as a kid, didn't you? Yeah, you didn't do any of the credits or anything. Very vague memories of being here. I mean, I remember the entrance plaza very, very well because I came on a very busy summer's day and my goodness, it's so quiet, but I, I can't complain. I. Uh, also, you said Furious back I do have two paracetamol waiting in my wallet. Yeah, he needs the them. There we go. I've been had four warnings. <laughs> I mean, no, you walk no particular reason. <laughs> you walk around the entrance here, and it's gorgeous. A, a Mediterranean fishing village. Ooh, nah, nah, nah. You know, it's just nice, it's isn't a good it? Song, that is. I like that. It's a lovely entrance to the park. And normally start the day with Furious Backo. We'll see how many people are in the queue though this morning, because obviously we had to go and collect our ticket. Normally, I'm first one there, but. We'll see what the queue's like this morning. It's probably worth doing it because it does get busy later on. Uh, it's staggered openings midweek at the moment. Probably Shambhala won't open until 11 o'clock, maybe a little bit later than that. Uh, and there's a few ride closures, nothing major, only a, a few small children's flat rides. And the park's open until 7 p.m. this evening. It's 8 o'clock at weekends if you come at this time of year. But if you come in the summer, June, July and August, the park is open until midnight every night. And they have a fireworks show every night on the Mediterranean Lagoon. <laughs> Furious Baco looks a little bit busy this morning, so we're going to start off with a ride on the Grand Canyon Rapids. Here we go, KFC Mega Wave, Spanish style. Are you ready? <laughs> I'm ready for the KFC very, very much. Oh yes, this is it. This can get really, really busy in the summer. All this cattle pen queue line. Port Aventura is home to some big cattle pens, but uh, at the moment, yeah, we're one of the first riders of the day. Probably what, second or third boat of the day? Third boat of the day. On the uh, park's Intamin Rapids. It's a good fast rapids, this one. Let's get on board. Nice filtered water here at Port Aventura as well. Look at that, you didn't get that back home. I needed a bath. <laughs> it's time to get wet on the Grand Canyon. I do love all this hashtag rock work. Oh, it soon gets moving, this one. Away. It's a fast rapids. Oi. Oh my goodness. See what I mean? It gets going, it's doesn't good, it? Man. It's good. It's good. Second, third boat of the day. Good speed, good speed, good speed. Oi. We've got a new little bit of theming up there as well. We've got like a falcon Morning. and stuff as well, like uh, someone on a horse. Right up, There we go, smile for the camera. Oi. Oh, lovely. Very nice. Hey, you'd even get some big mega waves on there. Like the work on this. It looks great, doesn't it? Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's really impressive. There is all water guns up at the side. I don't think there'll be anybody on them at this Moving time of day. The as well for any lighted geeks. Oh, there you go. Oh, there's no moving heads in them, though. Just the cases, yeah. Oh. <laughs> now, if you're going to get wet on this ride, it's on the next section. Oh, no. It's a long straight of little bunny hills, basically, oh, around this corner. Lovely. It's a short rapid. It's got a lot of five There you go. This is what you got to endure now. Oh. There we go. Oh. Hey. Hey. Normally this is the KFC. Here we go. KFC. KFC. Here we go. 
Oh, you're lucky you weren't sitting there. You're all right. All right. I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm all right. It's about 17 degrees at the moment, but it is going to get a bit warmer later. Oh, my God. I'll tell you what, that's the unlucky seat, that one. That and, uh, there you go. The water oh. sprayers are on as well. And uh, that's it for our ride on the Grand Canyon Rapids. Yeah, get your own spot back from home base. Home base. Home base. Oh, uh, it's in yeah. Argos now. Which one is it? There it is. Oh! oh. Lovely. Good seat, good and they're both on as well. That one there and the one on this side. It looks like we're going to get this one as well. Great. Good first ride that was. You enjoy that? Oh, oh yeah. It's, it's, well, it's short and sweet, that one. It's fast. Oh, please remain seated. Thank you. Please remain seated. There you go. Are we going to get a squirt? Oh, we missed it. Oh, we missed the squirt. Oh. There we go. Please remain seated. Thank you. Please remain seated. All time. Thank you. All of all. Sit down. Okay. It's big. It's tall. It's amazing. It's time to ride Shambhala. Oh, I thought you were about me. Oh, no, here it is. Oh, right. What do you think? Seeing it up close for the first time. Probably the most, like, this, I've, I've rated this coaster very highly for a long time. Gorgeous. Like, standing here, obviously, you've got the uh, B&M sit-down coaster that opened in 1995. Dragon Khan, designed by the one and only John Wardley himself. And then next to it, Shambhala, a B&M hyper coaster that opened on May the 12th, my birthday, 2012. And here's the dedication plaque. Let's go and have a look at it. There it is. The opening day of Shambhala. And I was here when this plaque was uh, unveiled. There you go. Opened on May the 12th, 2012 by Sir Arthur Mass, the president of Catalonia, uh, to inaugurate the attraction Shambhala at Port Ventura. Uh, yeah, that's a nice shot of the ride. Another fascinating fact for you, until a couple of years ago, this bit of fence here didn't used to exist. So you used to stand here. Oh, oh my God. Sorry, Shammy. Is that kind of wildfire? Uh, like the, <laughs> literally, you used to be able to stand here and there was no fence here. Bear in mind, that's the fastest part of the ride. It's crazy, isn't it, to see what they get away with the board. Not happy with this. It's been up You've got to face it. I'm not. Don't worry, Shambhala. You are still right up there. You are a gorgeous ride. And I can't wait to see Alex on you for the I, first I, time. I she's always going to be up there. I don't want to get any smaller. <laughs> <laughs> it looks gorgeous, especially on the back row. You get pulled over that drop. More airtime than many rides out there across the world. It's a stunning ride. I must say, from walking around Port Aventura, uh, I know we're still quite early on in the season, but normally there's quite a lot of, uh, here's a song, a bit of graffiti and stuff around. It looks really nicely presented, actually. Looks good. One thing I've got to point out, though, it's not a criticism, I thought it was a great thing. But I, I don't feel that I'm only an hour and a half flight away from something so beautiful. I think this park is gorgeous. I know people said it's changed over the years, I've heard so many stories, but for my first opinion, this is phenomenal. Like, to me, this is up there with the Disney park because it's, it's lovely. It's an atmosphere. Yeah, it's, it, like, people say, oh, but it's not, it's not completely themed. The audio isn't on point, it's not branded. But actually, it's a Disney park when you're singing Let It Go on Main Street USA. Yeah. Do we want to really be that picky? And at a Disney park, you don't get that. You don't get a be an either, no. <laughs> We love our Disney parks, but sometimes it's refreshing uh, to go to some different places. And the queue line's open for Shambhala. This mini area makes it, though. I mean, look at this and the water splash just here as well. Not an actual water splash that's powered by uh, the train itself, like Sheikra at Bush Gardens in Florida. Uh, with this, it's actually just fountains at the side, and they're in sync uh, with the ride when it comes through. Uh, because, obviously, if they'd have put the fins on the back, which creates the normal water splashes on rides, it would have slowed down the train too much. That it wouldn't have made it through this airtime hill just here. Uh, but, yes, anyway, Shambhala, here we go. We're about to enter the queue line. I still can't believe it's weird being here with Alex because obviously I've built this ride up so much over the years and to be honest, a lot of people have come out here on my recommendation and I don't think many people have been disappointed uh, with Shambhala so hopefully it'll live up to the hype for Alex uh, and even if it doesn't, I'm glad to get back on it anyway my number two coaster, Shambhala at Port Aventura, here it is I'm nervous to see where it ranks for me to be honest because <laughs> you've done this then Wildfire and I'm doing Wildfire then this so it, it's, it's going to be interesting, let's cool, see cool. but uh, yeah, who knows, it could go back to number one yeah. <laughs> not again. Yeah, nah, nah. Put me through that. Now, unfortunately, the queue line's nothing special on this one, but uh, we're entering the queue. It looks quiet around here, and it says it's on a 10:30 opening. Apparently, I can't see. the test seat, aren't I? I can't see much life around here, but uh, yeah, it looks quiet. For if it does open at 10:30, we're on to a winner because there's literally about a 15-minute queue there. Here we go then, climbing the lift hill for Shambhala. I'm a little bit gutted for Alex. I really am. I don't quite know what to say, so I'm going to let him uh, explain once I've come off. Here we go, fantastic views. Great to be getting back on this coast of my number two. Look at the views of the park. And 
there we go, Shambhala. Grade you back on you, baby. Oh, wow. Fantastic turnaround into that ejector air sign. Here we go. on this coaster. Woo! Oh wow, really, really good there. Shambhala at Port Ventura. Wow, great to get back on that incredible ride. Just look at it. Wow. Good to see running two trains as well. There's the third train. Missing restraints, that one at the moment. Love it, what a ride. Next up then, we're going for a ride on the park's B&M sit-down coaster. It's Dragon Khan. It was an original ride at the park, opened in 1995. It looks gorgeous. I mean, when I first came to the park, Obviously, Dragon Khan was one of the biggest roller coasters I ever experienced. And listen to the roar as it comes through the Cobra Roll. Like I say, it's good to see this running on two trains as well. Both the B&Ms here running two trains. This was advertised a 40 minute queue. We've been waiting about 15 minutes, which is really good. So what, about another five minutes or so left? Probably a 20 minute queue for Dragon Khan. So not too bad at all. Uh, 10 minutes for Shambhala and uh, 20 minutes for Dragon Khan. Right, let's get on board. Off we go then, climbing the lift hill on Dragon Khan. Hey, we've got a bit of interaction. We're about to endure eight inversions on Dragon Khan. It's got a pretty similar layout to Kraken over at SeaWorld in Orlando. There's Shambhala. Give him a little cheeky wave. Hello. 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 Have a nice ride. Oh my God. Angor down there, and off we go. That's a very nice little Straight down into a vertical loop large. fantastic view and we've just come off the front row of Dragon Khan. Like I say, this view here walking into China, it's always been impressive ever since the park opened and Dragon Khan used to feel massive. Obviously now it's got the towering hypercoaster Shambhala behind it. It doesn't look quite uh, as impressive, but it still rides fantastic, doesn't it? Did you enjoy it? I enjoyed Dragon Khan. It was a great coaster, really enjoyable, really good fun. We have to touch on something, don't we? We do. And I have to break it to them, I think. Okay. This guy, Big Bob, right here. Big Bob, Wicker Man. <laughs> Wicker Man, Big Bob, right here. Co cost me my ride on Shambhala today. However, we're not going to say no to it. I'm going to try it again. Sean's had his ride. I'm sure he'll do his review at some point. But unfortunately, today is not my day for riding Shambhala due to uh, 
feeling a bit bomb. However, motivation. It's going to give me a reason to one day come back here on this channel and ride that coaster. You, you got You've heard it here. I mean, he might get on it at some point in this trip. Uh, and I really hope that he does because it's a stunning ride, it really is. And it was riding fantastic today, Shambhala. Uh, had a back row ride and a mid-train ride. Uh, and I'm gutted, I'm genuinely gutted for Alex today. But he got on Dragon Car, and to be honest, how close were you on Shambhala? Uh, with the B&Ms, they need two clicks. With Shambhala, they like to give it three clicks, mainly because of just on, with it being a hyper coaster, That's and obviously so with it being so tall. And you're exposed, you've not got the sides of the train. Uh, he was so close, he was literally probably about that much off getting on Shambhala. If Hogan was here, he'd be like, ooh, and I'd be on it. I mean, I tried to push you in. Yeah, we, the guy tried to push you in. You and Hulk Hogan <laughs> on the <laughs> <way>. and, uh, <laughs> Yeah, unfortunately, today is not the day for Alex to ride, but it might be this trip. We've got three days. Fingers crossed. Hopefully, if you try some different uh, shorts, like you say, maybe them because shorts could be causing issues. Clothing can have a big impact. Because the pink, that's why. I know. <laughs> no, 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 we can't get you on. Pink you shorts. But, uh, anyway, there's still plenty of other coaster credits to get, including Al Diablo, Trend de Lamina. We may as well do it. It's just down here. It's an Aerodynamics classic coaster and a little story with this one obviously when the park opened back in 1995 uh, Tussauds were one of the owners of the park they were one of the founders along with another company a Spanish bank at the time um, yeah so obviously with this one John Ward had quite a bit of impact with the park he designed Dragon Khan uh, but he came in he saw Al Diablo that were about to ride and he thought that the layout to it was absolutely awful but it was too late in the design phase for him to do anything about it basically and so yeah it's not the best ride out there but it's my first time at PA, and I've got to say it, Sean, on a Tuesday. Oh no, <laughs> it is as well. It's a it's Tuesday. It's on a Tuesday. On a Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> so well, let's make our way down. I'm genuinely gutted, but it's not the end of the world. It's got on Dragon Khan, and I think he should be all right on the other rides here. Hopefully, Red Force over in uh, Ferrari Land, and, uh, and yeah, <laughs> try and get in the background. But uh, yeah, we're gonna have a good day. Not gonna let you put a downer on us. Uh, yeah, it's a lovely sunny day today. We're gonna make the most of it here at Port Aventura. Next coaster cred, second uh, coaster cred for Alex though today. Alde Ablo, Trend de la Mina. <laughs> Some good music, it's a feel good park, isn't it? It's very, very cheesy this park, that's why Alex and me really like it. Cheesy feel for cheesy people. <laughs> We're in the front car, second row on Alde Ablo. El Diablo. On what? El Diablo. <laughs> I see trees and trees. Ferrari land over there. I actually see some rides going. I can see the uh, shot tower going. Hello. Oh, what a view. Stampede over there. Another John Wardley classic. That opened in 1997, that one. And off we go. Interaction with the Silver River Flume. Whoa! Whoa! See what I mean? It's just like the Pepsi Max big one. Without the high colour or the Pleasure Beach. True. But with your Pleasure Beach pass, you get your free entry. Hey, I got it with the Pleasure Beach pass. So it's the same thing. Fantastic view over there into China. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you, Amanda. Here we go. Oregon Condors running. Oh, that's good to see. There's some good uh, Spanish arrow banking on this, isn't there? And the best bit is you have a drop into a trim break now. Are you ready? Oh, no. Ready for your trim break? It's coming. Here we go, trim break. <laughs> And then into a lift hill. That's why this roller coaster is a bit pointless because you have a trim, you have a drop into a trim brake and then another lift hill to take you back up again. Why not just get rid of the trim brake, bank it a little bit, and have a few little bunny hills? I don't know, but that's why we love it. It's El Diablo. Oh, Diablo. Oh, Diablo. Oh, no. Oh, that's what we like to see. All the towers are on by the looks of it. Towers here, mate. You're far away now. <laughs> Oregon Condor, great views there. The most intense part of the ride now. It'll really speed up with us being at the front as well. By the time we get to the bottom, we'll be uh, powering round. <laughs> Whoa! Into a theme park worldwide special. It's a Helix, 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 Helix. 
Hey, Chopper. Woo! Yeah! <laughs> and there we go, Aldo Ablo. Aldo Ablo. Here at Port Ventura. Tunnel at the end. To the right. Aldo Ablo. And there we go, thanks for riding. is happy now, look what he's got. He's found his milk, and it wasn't that expensive either, was it? Three euros for these two. So I mean, it's not bad. too bad, really, for theme park price. I mean, you pay more for milk at Fresh some places, bottle, don't you? Which means it's great. There you go, look at that. It's premium as well, it says on the site. <laughs> now, I think that's the, what, Caf Cafe Sula, does it say? Cafe Sula. Cafe Sula. There you go, we had a ride on uh, Al Diablo. Pointless uh, roller coaster trim, break the ride. Al Diablo. Al Diablo. You enjoy it? Very good. It's all right, isn't it? It's nice. Silver River Flume's a lot better and that interacts with it. But obviously Al Diablo is classed as the in the Mexican themed area uh, of the park, whereas Silver River Flume is over in Far West, uh, which is on the other side of the park. But obviously they meet in the middle and interact, uh, making it really good. Hurricane Condor running all towers by the looks of it, which is really good to see. I must say, I'm impressed with operations today. Uh, me and Charlotte picked up on operations last time we were here in April uh, last year, and we wasn't that pleased at all, and especially with the opening of Ferrari Land. I must say that uh, the overall opening of that was a complete farce. It was awful. Uh, whereas, I'm impressed today with what we've seen, which is good. Hey, we've got Winnie out there as well. Winnie Wolfpecker. The shows here at Port Ventura are fantastic as well. We'll definitely watch some of the shows. Personal favourites of mine are the Saloon Show. I think Alex will enjoy that. Even though it's mostly in Spanish, uh, you can kind of get the gist of what's going on with the jokes and pulling people out of the crowd and things. You never know, we might even get picked, uh, which would be quite funny. And obviously the big show, which is located in the Grand Theatre Imperial, which is just behind me. It's accessible from the Mexican area. It's in that big building there. Uh, it's the Grand Theatre Mayor from this side and then you can also access it from the Chinese side where it's the Grand Theatre Imperial and that's home to Dance Revolution 2 that we're going to go and watch later on today. I've been preparing for this for the last week because we only booked the trip literally a week ago. I feel like I have to do this moment now with Winnie Woodpecker behind me. <laughs> this is going to go horribly wrong now, I've rehearsed it. <laughs> How much wood would a, a woodpecker pluck if a woodpecker could pluck wood? Thank you. There you go. Try. You have to go and tell Winnie that. No, she won't understand. Annoying me, annoying me. I love this song. This was uh, made for the 15th anniversary of Port Ventura back in 2010. So this is a really nice area of the park, this transition area really between Mexico and Far West. And uh, it's lovely around here, really nice, all the flower beds and everything. Uh, and obviously in the summer, I know you might be thinking, what? It looks really hot out there, which it is. But to them, this is still quite chilly. Uh, in the summer when it's over 30 degrees, they have all like a restaurant out here with really nice seating and everything. Uh, and it's lovely, it's got a really nice atmosphere. They've got a lot of live music in Port Aventura as well. Uh, sometimes they'll have people out here like playing the guitars and violins and things, uh, which is lovely. Why really nice. are they wearing coats? I know, yeah. Are People are wearing nuts? coats. Are get your coats off. Come on, get your layers off. Nuts. What are they wearing coats for? Right. Now, a few years ago, this uh, part was taken over by another company, and they actually put in that huge water slide over in the Caribbean Aquatic Park. And in my opinion, it looks absolutely awful. They could have at least themed it in, uh, so it, it fit in with the far west area of the park. Even if they're the theme to like a water tower or something. Uh, but yeah, it kind of ruined one of, what was one of my favourite views. Walking down here into Far West Penitence and seeing all the mountains and stuff in the background, I thought was gorgeous. And it's a shame that they put that there. There's little tricks. Every 15 minutes, have a dance along and have a nice day. About. Tomahawk looks a bit busy at the moment, so I think we'll uh, give that one a miss for now. That's a little junior wooden coaster. Three wooden roller coasters on this park. If you like Woody's and you like B&M's, worth coming. There's Stampeda. So we're just in the queue then now for Stampeda, the twin track racing coaster, manufactured by Custom Coasters International, this one. Used to have different trains on it when it first opened in 1997. Uh, it used to ride much better. I did actually do those trains before they took them out in the early 2000s. And uh, yeah, here we go, you can hear it running around. I think this is running four trains as well, which is good. Two on the red side, two on the blue side. Colour. Pick my colour. Well, normally uh, red's the quietest. Real. Let's get have a look. Well, to be honest, that's not 40 minutes anyway. If it's running on uh, four trains, that's not too bad. I mean, blue's the fastest. 
and it uh, normally wins the blue one. But it's, again, it is random. It can change depending on the on the day type and how hot it is and things. So not too shabby. Not too shabby. You're getting in Chris's quotes, are you now? Oh, here we go. I'm paid for me what I do in royalties. <laughs> now this coaster is known for being one of the rougher roller coasters out there, but a lot of retracking work was done for when me and Charlotte came last time. There you go, pick your wagon. Charlotte did the retracking work last time. Yeah, we did it, yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we came after it had been retracked. And it was it was better. But I believe over winter this year they've done even more retracking work. And you can tell like when you look at that corner over there, look at that. There you go. What this really needs now though is GCI to come in and put the Millennium Flyer trains on. Uh, Tomahawk, which is the wooden coaster next to it for kids, that has got the Millennium Flyer trains on it. So really, oh, you trying to trip I up? Tried, no, I was trying to get you to trip up on that. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. There's a few uh, uneven surfaces in Port Ventura that you've got that you've got to watch out for. But uh, yeah, it's running four trains anyway, so that's good. It shouldn't take too long because I don't think it's 40 minutes. Depends how much Express comes up. Oh, actually, oh God, this side's actually busier. Change the plan, go on the blue side. There we go. <laughs> that's the thing, you can kind of judge it. When you've been here for a while, you'll know. If it's down the bottom just there, you know that's a bit too big. Let's go on the blue side. There you go. Normally red's a lot quieter, but obviously not. See, look at that now, it's, uh, that's just over there. So it's, it's a whole ramp quieter. So let's go on the blue one. Today. Give us a wave on the red train. Whee! Get ready for the big race. So the lift hill slows down a little bit here because we've got to wait for the other trains to make it onto the brake run for it to activate the sensor and then we'll speed up again in a second as soon as them uh, other trains have hit the brake run. There we go. Trains are clear. Tomahawk. Nice big drop on this one to start off. Oh, here it goes. Come to the Zayas part two for me. The time has come for the Wicker Man to rise. Together, Together we shall feed the flames. Great interaction with the other train now. There they go. Hey! Oh, wow. oh, the red are winning. Team wins, there we go. Stampeder. Well, I tell you what, that has drastically improved that coaster. That was really, really good. I enjoyed that. I really like, like it. Yeah, obviously, your first time ride. on it. Front row ride, blue side, Fantastic. what do you think? Really, really good. Very smooth. I, I know you said previously it's been rickety. I didn't feel uncomfortable. I just felt thrilled. It was great, really yeah. enjoyable. The interaction with the other train's great, especially when you go head on towards them and, the, yeah, and they pass you on the other side. Meet, oh, it's great for a wave. Everyone waves. It's, it, you know, it's like the international calling sign of a coaster, that is. It's a bit of a cheeky wave. No one speaks the same language, but it's fun. I enjoyed it. That's a very 
John Worley element as well. Like, if John had to design that ride, it wouldn't have had that element. Yes, it would have probably jeweled like it doesn't be next to each other. Uh, but the fact that you got the two trains, he goes head on. That is some really good designing to think that you know John designed it. The trains went round and then had to pass at that point, and then they had to meet up again towards the end of the ride. It's a fascinating coaster, and I'll certainly appreciate that a lot more now. Like when I first rode it back in the early 2000s, it was a really good ride. You can tell they've done some good uh, retracking work on it, and hopefully we'll get GCI in to put the Millennium Flyer trains on it. I really hope so. I think what makes it really different from something like the Grand National as well is the Grand National, even if you're just on it for the racing animal, which to be honest, most members of the GP, the general public, are there for. They want to race who's going to win. It becomes unpredictable. You don't know who's going to win. One could start faster, but by the end, it's a completely different story. It makes it quite enjoyable. It's more of an experience, again, even though to most people it's just a wooden coaster, but I love it. Yeah, no, really good, that. I mean, you know what? I'm impressed with Port Aventura so far. We're having a great day. Obviously, it's a shame that Alex didn't get on Shambhala earlier on, but other than that, the park actual operations themselves, very good today. Like Stampede, four trains, all the towers were in on Hurricane Condor. We'll have to do that later on. And uh, yeah, Shambhala, two trains, Khan, two trains. We can assume Furious Back goes on too, because even on the quietest of quiet days, that runs too. Um, so, so far, I'm impressed. It's not even one o'clock yet. We've done quite a lot of the major rides throughout the park. And uh, yeah, I'm pleased. I'm having a really nice day. And it's good to see the park that I once loved a hell of a lot. This was my number one park for many years. And um, sort of getting a little bit of that back, because operations for me has took away from it for quite a while. Uh, there's a few little things that I wish they'd, they'd do. I mean, stuff like this, the fact they left all these uh, rosettes and things up from the anniversary. I don't really like all that kind of stuff. And I've noticed how they've left up the icicle lights on the buildings from Christmas. You can see them all on these games units here. Little things like that, for me, take away from it. The fact that you've got this beautiful Wild West area, uh, Far West Penitence, and then you've got like the icicle lights on it. For me, little things like that. I know you're just thinking, oh, it's only little things, but for me to get fully immersed into that area, stuff like that needs to be fixed and needs to be gone. I only put that sort of stuff up when it's a Christmas event. Uh, but overall, operation were the main thing for me that bugs me and uh, yeah I'm enjoying it so far great to be back at Port Aventura So we've made our way back down to Mediterranean, the first part of the park that you walk into, and certainly one of the most beautiful. I mean, all the areas are really nice here, but there's something really nice about just sitting here, looking out over the lake, and of course, Furious Baco, the intermingling wing rider, and enjoying a nice classic hot dog and chips. There you go. In terms of food here, there's lots of options. To be honest, uh, I know a lot of you out there don't really like your fast food. You prefer going to more sit-down restaurants and things, and there's lots of them here at Port Aventura. In fact, the one just at the side just here is really nice, uh, along in Mediterranean, and there's some really nice sit-down restaurants all throughout the park, uh, so they're definitely worth checking out. But if you want something in a quick bite to eat, uh, then just here in Mediterranean, they do burgers, hot dogs, uh, chicken strips. They do it all just here. So the last building you come to before you get to Furious Back, it's reasonably priced. Uh, this meal here costs 10 euros 50, and that's as of April 2018. That's for your Oscar Mayer large hot dog, and like I says on the side, XXL as well. There you go, <laughs> XXL hot dog, and uh, yeah, you get your fries and your uh, drink. And the best thing is, for the same price, you can actually have a beer for the same price as a soft drink here. I mean, I've not had a beer yet, it's a bit too early for me to have a beer, but I'll definitely have one later on or another day uh, whilst we're here. Just sitting out here, looking over the lake. It's gorgeous, seeing all these coasters running around, all these rides, and like I say, I'm impressed with operations so far. Another little tip, don't do Furious back at the start of the day, because it had a big queue earlier on, and now it's on 10 minutes according to the board, uh, so back will be a good choice uh, after this one, with it being the middle of the day. Go on, what's he gonna say? Oh, I thought, oh. I thought you got oh, back out. Yeah. No, I, gonna, uh, I was gonna say, City de Diaz. Oh, there you go, you're looking at translations, are you? Seven out of ten. Seven, oh, is that what it is? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, Seven out of ten. Nice hot dogs here, though, I do enjoy them. And uh, I do like these as well. I've got like the uh, customised thing, what they put on for different times of the year. They have like a Halloween uh, one, what they put on. And this at the moment, they're advertising Ferrari Land. In terms of Ferrari Land, it's 
not gone down that well for the park really. I mean, when it first opened, they were charging a lot of money. I think me and Charlotte paid something like 50 euros, I can't quite remember. Something like that though, to go in for one day into that park. Now you can add it on for as little as five euros they're advertising on the posters and they're still not getting people in. Um, so yeah, it's a shame really, but I just think really with Ferrari Land that they've been better off branching out and doing an Italian themed area of the park uh, and building Red Force and a few other rides than actually going down the route they did and making it a separate park. Uh, unfortunately, it only seems to be Disney and Universal uh, that are the companies that can make like two parks work, if you know what I mean, in terms of one resort. Uh, and they're, they're certainly very good at doing that at Disney and Universal, the way they bring it all together. With Port Ventura, they've not quite got that right, in my opinion. Uh, but it's certainly a really nice park, and we'll be heading in there uh, tomorrow, go and do Red Force, go and do some of the other attractions in there. You've got like a flying theater, a bit like Soaring. Uh, so that's worth checking out there's another simulator ride a couple of other bits and the new children's area actually opens this friday you never know we might get a soft opening uh, there's only a few kids flat rides but there is also a new coaster now i'm not too sure if that's going to be ready in time for friday's opening because from what i know uh, from someone who works here who's been sending me photos uh, they were only building the coaster last week so we'll go in there tomorrow and have a look and see if it looks like it is going to open but if not it'll definitely be a return trip and to be honest i can't take it seriously when he's got a big hot dog in his mouth but uh, <laughs> With, with how operations are this trip, I'll, uh, I'll certainly come back uh, at some point. Maybe even do Halloween later this year. Or if not Halloween, uh, come back for the Christmas event because the Christmas event is great. You don't get the water rides, but you get everything else, including Furious Baco. Just what you want there. What a beauty. They're loving it on the front row. Put your hands in the air like you just don't care. Oh, yeah. After a really nice meal then down here in Mediterranean, Time to go and see the monkeys, Furious Bacco. Here we go. This is the big one for Alex now. It's been, uh, this is another one that's been hyped up in terms of like how it, it is. Yeah, well, I think so. It's a little bit uh, jolty, depending on where you sit. It's got a bit of a confusing theme for this ride, so I'll kind of explain it. I don't 100% know it myself, to be honest, but I've kind of worked it out over the years. Vineyard. Yeah, since it opened back in 2007. Basically, this is a, a what, like where wine is produced, basically, inside this building. This is all your vineyard here, with all your grapes and things. And, uh, yeah, the monkeys have basically attacked this vineyard and uh, yeah, and then attacked all the machines and things, so it starts going a little bit wrong. And then some crazy professor guy comes on on the pre-show, don't have a clue why he's there, and, uh, and then he goes, oh no, 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 and the train launches. So there you go, that's a bit of, bit of backstory for you. Doesn't really make much sense, but... A mop for a leg. <laughs> it's quite funny. Nice palm tree, that one, though. It's probably the best palm tree on part of that. I'd give that a good eight out of 10. There it is, running round. It looks picturesque. Whatever you think about this coaster, it looks nice. And I've got to, I just quite like it. I mean, it's one of those for me. Yeah, it's a bit rough, but I quite enjoy it. There's nothing wrong sometimes with a rough ride. Not everything needs to be ridiculously smooth. And the fact that you launch at 80 miles an hour on a bit of an incline really makes it. Oh, we've got some uh, broken effects here, which is a shame. This normally spins around all part of the theme, this mechanism. Oh, it's quite a low key, it's not in any of this. To be honest, this can get really bad sometimes, especially in the summer. Furious Baco has got a big fan though, and there it is on the ceiling, the biggest fan there of Furious Baco. Look at that beast. Here we go. On Furious Baco. The pre-show's working. We're on the third row from the back, and Alex... <laughs> He's on the wing. There he is. Oh, he's, he's, he's his first ever time. Oh my god. So it's gonna fill up now with wine. Oh no. Oh my god. <laughs> Off we go. Okay. How was it? It was horrible. Wait, was it that bad? Yeah. See, it wasn't too bad on my seat there. I quite oh. enjoyed it. Backo. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> so we've just come off 
furious backache, as uh, I think Alex is going to call it. I don't think you enjoyed that at all, did you? Awful. <laughs> really bad. <laughs> I mean, I needed a wee before we went on there. I was, uh, I I was desperate that I was on it. So how was your ride on Intamin's only <laughs> wing rider? I wonder why, I mean, it's a great coaster. Why is there not more of these around the world? Every theme park operator in the world needs to be contacting Intamin to buy one of these, surely? Yeah, to put, put as a theme instruction, nothing else. <laughs> yeah, what did you think to it then? Oh, I hated it. <laughs> the launch was great. Yeah, the launch pretty is sure cracking. It was nice, it looked all right, it was nice, I'm pretty sure on a ride. The ride itself, we just won't talk about. We'll just say it vibrates a little bit too much. And... It does, but we'll get you on like an inner seat. You'll go on it again, right? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I'll ask my kidneys, they'll tell me later on now after that one. You can actually feel your organs on that. I'm not joking now, I'm not overreacting. Your organs, you can feel them wobbling inside. I mean, I was alright on that one because I was on an inner seat. As soon as you go on the outside, uh, I think there was two more rows behind us and would have been at the back. But uh, yeah, it, it's one of them characters. Me, I quite enjoy it. I know it's a bit debatable out there. But uh, for me, the launch more than makes up for it. And the inversion as well. Let's be niche, let's walk along this, this bridge. It's nice, isn't it? Are you enjoying Port Aventura so far? Oh, sure. Come on, let's walk. <laughs> yeah, I just think the park's got a great atmosphere. I mean, you know, besides... Watch the tree. That, yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Besides that experience, I think it was actually quite all right. I feel like I'm presenting the news all weather right now. Yeah, you look like it. And the weather today is 21 degrees in Salau. 24 degrees right now. Is it? As of when I went for a week. Oh, my, it, oh my God, it's getting warmer. It but, uh, warmer, yeah, it's lovely. Down here. So I'm going to leave you at this point. I'm going to go to another ride. It means it's time to cue the next video clip. I've just watched a Samaritan man make clothes to islands in the stream by Dolly Parton. I think it was Dolly Parton. I don't quite know what I'm watching right now. Oh, and that's Ian Coulter there, it's nice. What, making clothes? <laughs> Okay, so it's time to do something what really doesn't make any sense here at Port Ventura, but we're going on. It's not Ice Age anymore, it's oh. Dino Escape 40. Dino Escape 40! <laughs> and at least dinosaurs kind of fit in with this theme around here a bit better than Ice Age does. I mean, it's still not much better. I'd still rather have uh, a new ride in here or making the most of this space. It's a simulator ride, basically. There's no point in me taking the camera on board because you won't see a lot because obviously you wear the 3D glasses. But uh, yeah, this space is used a lot better at Halloween for Wreck, which is a fantastic scare attraction where you queue up all around here and you actually enter the attraction just around here as well and send you through quite a bit of the show building uh, for Dino Escape. After this, we're going to make our way back up to the China-themed area and go and watch uh, Dance Revolution 2. Can't wait to see it. Lots of tech, lots of acrobats. And I think Alex will really enjoy that performance. So we'll uh, see you when we come out of Dino Escape. 4D. <laughs> just watched Dino Escape 4D. I'm not going to talk about it. You know my thoughts from last year. Uh, no changes from last year with that one. But uh, Alex, the only dark ride in the park. What did you think to it? I prefer the park without dark ride. <laughs> yeah, to be honest, it, it's not great at all, is it? I'd much rather see them remove that and turn it into something else. Uh, the ride system itself isn't even that good in my opinion either. I quite like the sound of the, uh, the wreck maze they've done in uh, Halloween previously. I mean, that is the best thing to do in there. What about, I, mean, I haven't seen the horror film, I've, I've heard of the horror film, but I know it's a very popular film in Spain, but... Espanol? I, uh, no, I think I was just... 
<laughs> stand, in, stand in the box, to be honest. At least you've done it, though. Like, when you come to a park for the first time or when it's your first time doing the rides here, you've got to do these things so you can actually see what they're like. But Port Aventura is a beautiful park, but when it comes to indoor rides, it is something what they lack. But then you think, hang on a minute, look at the beautiful sunshine. Do they really need indoor rides? It's one of those, really. Remember when you were a kid? You has got a really big box where your mum like, had a new fridge or whatever, or, you know, she had something in the house. And, you, <laughs> and when you were a kid, you used to think, I took it over my head, sit in it, and then stop. You just sit in the yeah. fridge as a kid? Not in the fridge. <laughs> That's why I love milk. And so that explains um, it. But no, like, you at least like, turn the box into your own den. But you wouldn't want to spend 25 minutes with a Pixel view in a cardboard box, would you? Yeah. I think I'd probably enjoy that more than that. To be oh. I love the park, but Jesus Christ, guys. Yeah, it? it's not great, that, is it, Dynasty? But it's better than Ice Age was there, because Ice Age really didn't fit. Bear in mind, you're in a hot country as well, and then you go into something what's themed to, to Ice Age. It wasn't great, but uh, yeah, everything else at the park, I'm impressed this trip. I'm really enjoying it, actually. It's nice to be back, and I'm just pleased with operations. Like I say, it's my favourite part for a long time, and I'm enjoying what we see so far. We spoke to some of the fans, though, Justin, they did say that Red Force is on an hour's queue on one train in Ferrari Land, so we'll see you tomorrow. I think Polynesian people love a bit of snow, I'm sure they, they get it twice a year, you know, normally on a bank holiday when <laughs> they want to be off work. You know. This is really nice around here. Unfortunately, this pathway is underused a lot of the time now, mainly because of when they opened uh, Shambhala and Sesame Street, it meant that you could walk through a lot quicker uh, through that way. You, you remember this, this bit? This I was talking about up here. Marco Polo. Yes, I remember being here and seeing this view. I mean, 2007, gosh, that's 11 years ago. I was 10, wow. And this is a really underrated part of the park now because a lot of people miss it because they go through the shortcut of Sesame Street uh, up to Shambhala. So you've got to definitely walk around here. And if you like the bubble shows that you've seen at some parks, the one here is probably the best bubble show going. It's called Bubble Bow, and it's located just there in the big theatre. So much entertainment here. And that's where we're heading to next, the biggest stage show on the park on one of the biggest theme park shows I've ever seen. And one of the best, to be honest. It's produced uh, by Gianfranco Bellini, who's an Italian guy who used to do the shows at Gardaland, Europa Park. He's got a lot of experience, and he's now based here at Port Aventura. Uh, he's been here for quite a few years now and he's put together some amazing shows across the park but especially uh, in the big theatre up in China so we'll make our way up there now the good thing about this venue is uh, unlike most theme parks they don't allow you to film shows here they want you to film the shows and share it as long as you don't use any flash photography uh, so which is really good if we're going to China have you got your visa ready? I've got it yeah uh, see how it's valid till next year when? let's go Shanghai Disneyland <laughs> But uh, yeah, we'll make our way up to the theatre and uh, I'll show you when we get up there. It's a beautiful venue, this. It can seat uh, about 1,500 people, I believe. So, really nice. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. Oh, yeah, I remember. <laughs> just, just in front of you there. Sorry, you know. I wasn't really paying just attention. in front of you. And this is a really nice view here as well as Dragon Khan and Shambhala as you make your way across the Great Wall and up into the main area of China. Look at that. What a beauty. Whoa. over the Great Wall of China here and I've just noticed a new bit of theming here at Port Ventura. I mean this looks great along here. They've actually put in some panda bears down there. Don't they look nice? Obviously pandas associated with China and uh, yeah they're new for this year they are. Look at those. Like I said I noticed a bit of new theming earlier on over at the Grand Canyon Rapids. They had like a horse and uh, a couple of bits on there whereas here now you've got these new pandas. There's a few sitting there at the side as well. Obviously it means there's a bit more to look at when you go on the train around the park now as well. And we'll definitely have to do that at some point. The railway's really nice. And it's a picturesque park anyway. Um, but yeah, just adding little bits of theming like that. I think that looks really good there. I quite like those little pandas. Uh, just make the photos even nicer from uh, on this angle. Here we are there at the Grand Theatre Imperial. And here's the little turnstile. This one's for you, Harry. Look at that. It's a bit pointless, that one. The turnstile that leads to nowhere. Harry turnstiles, everybody. <laughs> two showings then of Dance Revolution 2 today. One at three and one at five. We're watching the three o'clock showing. You come here on a busy day and this is full. We've arrived 25 minutes before. The house opens about 15, 20 minutes before. What do you say? Dance Revolution 2. No, no, it's three. It's two, this one. No, no, it's on at three. Oh, all right. 
Right, okay. Well, this is Dance Revolution 2. They had the first one no, last year. No, it's not at two, it's oh. not at three. No, okay, shut up. Yeah. <laughs> it's Dance Revolution 2, ignore him. Oh, I told it. you. Yeah. <laughs> In UK time, it's two. Oh, there we go. So, yeah, you make your way round this way into the theatre. It was about 15 minutes before. But, uh, yeah, let's go. It doesn't seem very busy. Unless they've already let people in early, but... Don't bring your baguettes in. No baguettes, please. Nice venue, this one. I'll show you some highlights of the show.
just watched Dance Revolution 2, not 3, here at Port Aventura. And you know what? That was absolutely fantastic. A really nice production there. A cast of around 30 people. Uh, some really good acrobats in there as well. Not quite as many acrobats as there was before uh, in previous shows, but you had some really good stuff. You had like a, a girl that stretched and did all sorts of positions that, God, it's crazy. Uh, you had like a big trampoline scene in there. Uh, there was some guy who did like some juggling uh, with some balls. That was good. I enjoyed it. It was a really nice production, but I must say that's the first time they've ever used, or I've seen a show where they've used lasers inside that theatre. They've never used them before. It's always been just park hands and moving heads and stuff, uh, but they used lasers and the lasers looked absolutely stunning. Uh, they did a really modern like Lady Gaga section that went then went on to loads of other songs and it looked incredible. Uh, they brought like these big triangles on with all LEDs and mirrors on. All the park hands were moving. Honestly, as a production, it's one of the best theme park shows out there. If you like your cheese, like me and Alex do, uh, I think Alex loved it, we'll find out in a second. Um, yeah, it's a very cheesy show. It's very professional, but it's very cheesy. Uh, if you don't like cheese, then you're not gonna like that. Because some of the stuff like they come on with motorbikes, there's fire, there's pyro, there's scooters, there's a massive screen at the back with all different scenes on it. It's an incredible theme park show. And the fact that that's included in your theme park admission, I think it's absolutely fantastic, to be honest. And that's one of about 10 different shows here at the park. That's obviously the highlight. That's the biggest show here at Port Aventura World. Uh, but I think that's a fantastic production. And don't miss it. It's a really good show, that. All the ones they've done over the years, Christmas, Halloween, the summer shows, they're all great. Uh, and that's certainly up there as one of my favorite ones they've done. Uh, a really nice production. It's probably my favorite non-Halloween like show. The Halloween ones are always my favorite in there. But we had a bit of Halloween vibe to it when the, with the fire and the, uh, they brought like, the motorbikes on and stuff. Uh, but yeah, it was stunning. And the best part of it, you come back out and you're at the mystical Shambhala. But uh, there you go, Alex. What did you think to the show? <laughs> Bear in mind, I like cheese, but this guy is even cheesier than cheese. It was a bit camp, wasn't it? <laughs> in a good way, though. In a blooming great <laughs> way. Uh, not so many times I want to say the other word for blooming. It was blooming incredible. It I loved it. it. It's, it's not everyone's cup of tea. I get, I get what you mean. It's, it's so in your face, isn't it? It's different than with Lady Gaga, Ed Sheeran, and Daft Punk, Pitbull. We were just we were having a rave to Pitbull in, in the middle of Spain. It was great. But I loved it. <laughs> Just the feel of the show, the light and the vibe, the atmosphere, whether there's 10 people or there's a thousand people in there, it doesn't really matter. It's the same atmosphere all, all around. And yeah, you know what? <laughs> I love it. I really loved it. It was fantastic. It fits with this part, doesn't it? Very extravagant, very in your face. And that isn't for everyone. Like That's the thing. Like, a lot of people with Europa Park, it's completely different. It's more of a chilled out vibe. With this, it's like your Spanish party dance holiday, really. And that's the feel they go for with this park. Big extravagant roller coasters, such as Shambhala. Bala and Red Force, uh, and then fantastic shows like that. Just a bit camp, but I like yeah, it. It is great, isn't it? It fits Alex all over. Yeah, it cheers. does. Like it does, though, doesn't it? Like pink that. Shorts. I look, I look like I fit the part. Yeah, it does. Yeah, in the pink yeah, shorts. Pink. But uh, no, I'm glad you enjoyed it. I thought, to be honest, like for a few years, I've thought Alex needs to come out and see that because it's just a brilliant show. It changes every year, but it all follows that same sort of format. Uh, you know, like of all the dance music and big acrobats and things. And it's just a really nice production. Oh, I get a little cuddle. Shocked you thought of me for once. No, I did think when I first saw it. I mean, I've been out here numerous times. Me and Jack have watched all them shows for years uh, and we love the Halloween stuff. But yeah, that was incredible. Really good. Dance Evolution 2. And a lot of that cast uh, appear in the parade at the end of the day as well. But on these days, uh, I think it's at 20 to 7, about 20 minutes before park close, uh, the parade down in Mediterranean that runs all the way uh, around the lagoon. But uh, I'm going for another ride on Shampala now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> no, I'm not. Dragon Khan! Yeah, he's going on Dragon Khan, I'm going on Shambhala. And they look, both look quite quiet, so we'll uh, catch up with you after. Afterwards. Yeah, that's what I like to see with Shambhala. It's only a 10 minute main queue, single rider, walk on. I had two rides there in 10 minutes on the second tallest roller coaster in Europe. You got what you wanted. What? You don't like the pink shorts, do you? No. But, oh, no! <laughs> you are joking. On Dragon Khan? How? Why? Where? I heard Where? it as well. I heard it on the, on the coaster just after the drop, first drop. Oh no, just before the last loop. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Oh, All right. Oh, it's a binder from Primark, six quid. To be honest though, I think if we get you in some different shorts tomorrow, we can get you on the baller. 
I hope so. I've now got, I've now got a hole for the uh, restraint, so you never know. <laughs> it's all right. You've only got three hours to go today. It's a bit breezy. It is a bit breezy. I mean, yeah, I, mean, I was going to say, I can imagine it's a bit breezy down there, especially for uh, certain parts of the body. But that uh, lounge hall's getting air conditioned today. I tell you what, you know where they're going to be breezy, don't you? Oh no. At the top of Hurricane Condor, the tallest drop ride that Alex has ever done. Manufactured by Intamin, but to be honest, it's nowhere near as good as Apocalypse in Trait of Manor. I know you're thinking, what the hell, but honestly, it's nowhere near as forceful. Well, so yeah, it's a lot my, taller. So far, but my Intamin expectations for this park aren't too high after uh, <laughs> yeah. the backache itself. You're after uh, Furious, but there you go. Now, with this ride, there's, you don't get a choice whether you're sitting down or standing oh, up. Great. You are put wherever they tell you to. So you could be sitting down for the first one or you could be standing up. So you can't queue for a certain one and you're not allowed to ask either. Uh, so it's fair on the queue. Personally, I do think there should be separate queues for it, especially as some people would not want to do a stand-up experience uh, and others don't mind doing the sit-down. But we'll make our way over to Hurricane Condor and uh, give it a go. Yeah! <laughs> oh, it's, it's going so well. funny. It's going well. Back eight. Oh dear, in the two minutes that we've walked from Shambhala over in China, here to Hurricane Condor in Mexico, it's gone down, it's broke. <laughs> he has a reprieve for now. Yeah, literally the catch car seems to have got stuck and then it's released the gondola about, what, 30 foot from the top of the tower? So I'm not too sure what's going on there. It might be a comeback later job for that one. Um, but yeah, if not today, we'll definitely get it in another day. Ah, no rush, don't die. What's that? No rush? Well, we can get one and just wait if you want. Wait for it to open. Do you know what? I need the toilet. Do you? Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. Why have you got your gloves on then, Alex? Welcome to our sea the sea class del Neos. It's a mirror maze. It is a mirror maze. What the but hell? It's impossible. What, are you ready to see just how big this mirror maze is? Here we go. What? The it's so you don't mess the mirrors up. That's why. <laughs> I told you it's nothing what you'd be expecting. I nearly just touched a woman by accident. <laughs> Come. Are you real? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. High five. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Me. I told you it's not what you expect. Well, if we can find something funny, you'll like it when you get to the middle of it. There's some funny uh, special effects. It's well themed, it's one of the newer attractions of oh, Port Ventura. Oh, split the mirror. Oh. Sean, stop looking in the mirror, you're breaking it. See, that's why you got away your gloves, you see. Okay. Stop looking in the mirror, you're breaking Sean. Horrible. Oh. This is a big name. It's huge. Oh, here we go, we're getting to the fun bit now. Just I like it. It fits the theme as well. Here we go, there's the bit of... Oh, someone's already e-stopped it. Basically, there's a spinning disc in the floor. And you can e-stop it. Someone's already e-stopped it. It's not working. Someone needs to pull the e-stop out. Hang on. Oh, it's broke. It's broke. Basically, people normally e-stop it, and then it... Uh, yeah, make sure your e-stop is pulled out. There you go. Let's check this one over here. You try that e-stop. That one's out. Oh. It's like operating a ride. Yeah, it, it's broke. Normally this spins and then you can e-stop it and pull them all out and start it again. Well, there you go. You is, it, with e -stop, with. is it what you was expecting, Alex? <laughs> <laughs> it's well thing, though. Here we go, it's fixed it. It was that e-stop over there. There we go. I my e-stops. There you go, he knows his rise. Yeah. yeah, try and freak people out as you come around. I'll film you. It's like being in Madden Two Swords. So where did you? Come on! Yeah! Happy Halloween! Do it again, do it again, do it again. Come the victims. It's the same ones. No one else anymore. Any more? Any more? Um, spinning around. You're about to fall away. What is he doing? We have to restop it for that. Oh, none of that. 
So there we go, we've just done Alex's mystery attraction. And you know what the best thing is about doing that mirror maze? Whilst we've been in there, the takers have been out, and the fixed hurricane condor are right next to it. So here we go, 10 minute wait apparently. Not normally 10 minutes for this one, it's normally one of the busier rides at the park. This just shows how busy it can get. Look at all this view. Oh, it is quite quiet though. It's not very windy at all today, so they're running all the towers. Sometimes when it's windy, it has to run on reduced capacity. Yeah, probably about, about 15 minutes for this at the moment. Not too bad, bear in mind it's got all the towers. A bit busier than Apocalypse at Drayton Manor. Couldn't see the audios on, this was very quiet when me and Charlotte came. But uh, there we go, we'll see you on the ride. Please excuse any inconvenience. I can't believe it. <laughs> it's broken down again. Sorry guys, the ride is closed. Should we go and do some water rides? Can I let the sword unit the emergency here? Get down that way, leave me alone. <laughs> I'll get him on it at some point this trip. I'll get him on. Right, time for another roller coaster credit for Alex then. And to be honest, a really good junior coaster. It's a wooden coaster, it's called Tomahawk. And it interacts with Stampeda right next door to it as well. This is like with Robbie Williams. Ah, oh, no, yeah, a bit of Robbie. That's what we like about this part. Born and bred in Stoke on Trent. That's what we want. The best people come from Stoke, apparently. But uh, yeah, so anyway, we're going on Tomahawk. It's nice, this. It's got the Millennium Flyer trains on, like I mentioned earlier on. Uh, so it runs really well. It's a good junior coaster, this one. Such a nice feel-good park this is, and it's a quiet day for the park today. It's not the quietest I've ever seen it, uh, but it's certainly down there as one of the quietest days. Let me entertain you, right? Let's go for a ride on Tomahawk. It's worth pointing out, this is one of them rides that does open later in the day. There is quite a few staggered openings. This is an 11.30 ride. Stampeda is as well now. Uh, but at least you've got uh, Shambhala and Dragon Khan uh, that open earlier. I mean, the fact that Shambhala's at 10.30 now is really good. Hopefully it's running uh, two trains. Oh, it is running two trains. Brilliant. Yeah, these are really nice, like the Millennium Flyer Star trains. Now let's go for a ride. Up we go then on Tomahawk. Really nice comfy trains these ones. All padding down the side. Really nice. Wow, look at the views. Oh! Perfect timing there with Stampeda's blue train. Woo! Such an enjoyable little ride. There we go, it's on the horn. Really enjoyable that, really nice family coaster. Not too intense, the train's really out. Honestly, if you get something like this on Stampeda, it really helps, we really improve the experience. This is what I love about Port Ventura. All the street theatre, shows, entertainment. Our UK theme bars could really learn a lot. 20 years this year of Woody being at Port Ventura. Oh. oh, that's nice on the back. I assume we'll see that in the parade. Right, we're heading down to this end of Peniton. On the front as well. It did, yeah. I reckon it'll be in the parade that one as well, one of the floats. We saw a pirate boat earlier as well around Mediterranean, so I assume that'll be the parade. Uh, a few new floats, it seems. We head down to this end of Penitence now, where we're going to go on Silver River Flu. Yeah. I do enjoy this one. Ripping my shorts is getting <laughs> yeah, look no at this less now. predominant. Yeah, it's getting crazy. I mean, I've just tried to pull his shirt down a bit so it stretches, but he's just had a look at the price of some shorts here. And how much? 69.95. 69.95. Euros. Not which, great. Which is around 45 to the US dollar. Thank <laughs> what? <laughs> So here we go then, we're on Silver River Flume. 
it would be so much better if they'd have built this with plenty of hashtag rock work around it. It's a little bit exposed. I mean, it would have been nice if there was rocks with all around the trough. There's El Diablo that we went on earlier on. But it's actually a really good flume ride, this. And uh, you've got to make the most of these log flumes. At the end of the day, we've lost quite a few over the past few years. Loggers leap at Thorpe Park. What's happening with that one? What do you want to see on the site? Comment below. Do you want to see it removed? Maybe a new ride going its place? Good thing about the water rides here at Port Ventura. Look at the water. Look how clean it is. It's all filtered. And here we go. Sorry, Sean, I wasn't listening. I just said, no, 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 what the? Hey. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. It's a solid start. Hola. Wow. Hey. Really good interaction there. El Diablo making its way around. Diablo. El Diablo. It's five o'clock. A couple of hours left till park close. Here at Port Ventura World. Yeah, hola. Nothing. <laughs> oh, summer is here. Here's a little behind the scenes look at the train just over there. The Central Pacific Railroad. Some more logs down there. Lots of spare logs. The tallest water slide in Europe over there. What is it with people swearing for the photos? Hola! Yeah, hola! Hey, hey, howdy! I love it. I've still not seen Red Force go around once today. You can just see it peeking through the trees over there in Ferrari Land. I've not seen it going all day. We know it's open, but it's running one train, like I mentioned earlier on. So crazy. And obviously, with it being like a 10 second ride anyway. It's one of those, isn't it? Oh yeah, Shami oh, always looks gorgeous. Oh, place to be. Beautiful. <laughs> Condor. Yeah, the water's lovely on this. Oh, there's a crane over there behind Stampeda. How did Massive. I not notice that? Oh, oh. How did I not notice that crane when we was going up earlier on Stampeda? How's the rip, Alex? <laughs> Oh, the stops on that lift go down. Oh dear. Oh, oh we got a breakdown. Oh, here we go. Wah, wah, wah. Oh dear. Yeah, we were stopped for about 10 minutes there. We had a uh, slight technical problem. I thought we were going to get an evac then, didn't you? We just got the roof. Yeah, we the evac on, the, on this one. There we go. We've just gone down that second drop. The wettest drop, in my opinion. It's one of the smallest, but it's the wettest. I really like this section of the ride now. It really builds you up for that last drop because it takes you around it just here so you can see it on the left hand side. Builds you up for what you're about to go down. Here we go. Last drop. Woo! Oh, there we go. Oh, it came over a bit on the front there. There we go. Silver River Flume. Flashy washy. Lovely. Nice when it's this weather. Oh, there we go. Enjoyed a bit of water ride action there on Silver River Flume. Bit of a breakdown, like I say, about 10 minutes. And we timed it quite well because the ride's actually broken down now. Uh, it's out of order, as Port Aventure I like to call it. Oh, I can hear Hello at Tahiti out right over there. Out of order. That's really good there, the Polynesian Dance Show. Located just down here in Polynesia. I just, saw, I just saw his bum. Did you? <laughs> yeah, they do. They have like uh, little grass skirts on and did stuff like that. What? Little grass oh, skirts. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> there you are. A bit of palm tree here for you. Right, we're getting another water ride now. Tatuki Splash. Let's go. Splash Tatuki. How long's the queue? Zero, apparently. Let's go. It's an intermin shoot the shoot ride, as they're called. I enjoy this one. This gets silly cues in the summer as well. <laughs> so let's go. It's a tiki splash. Let's do it. Are you ready to get even more wet? Yes, oh, indeed. Oh, yes. Let's go. Oh, dear. So here we go. We're on to Tuki Splash, or as I like to call it, Chewing Gum Tunnel. Let's see if this has been fixed in here or not. All it needs is a bit of maintenance over winter. Oh, Shambhala there about to come over the big hill. Oh, what a beast. It's what we're about to endure. Is it still a chewing gum tunnel or has it been fixed? In the famous words of Disneyland, you're about to find out. Here we go. Oh, there's not loads. To be fair, they've took quite a lot out. This used to be covered in here. It's not as bad. Still a few bits. You want a piece of your eye? Nah, I'm all right. Oh, there's a few bits here. Oh, here we go. 
Lovely. To be honest, they have cleaned up quite a lot of it. Oh, smooth as hell. Quality Intamin boat ride. Oh, the waterfall's off there. That's not working. That's a shame. To make our way round to the first drop. Would you know? Too excited the front. Yeah, here we go. Drop number one. If you're on the front row, this is actually wetter than the last drop. I hope they'll shut him up. Shut up. <laughs> He's excited. He's counting a bit too early, though. Please soak him. Oh! I knew. Get ready for the scream. Lovely. There you go. Yeah. Drop number one. Sometimes you can get soaked here because you're going up the lift hill and then the splash when the main drop comes over and soaks you on that lift hill. So let's uh, find out and see if that's going to happen today on Splash to Tuki. Ah, uh, there we go. Oh, that one's gone down. If there's another one that's about to come out of the top, we could be in for a soaking when we get onto this first part of the lift hill. Oh yeah, it could, yeah, we could get a soaking now. And it comes over with quite some force if you're in the right place. Is the one at the top of the lift hill? Oh no, oh God, here we go, we could get it now. We could get it. So obviously that comes around the top. As soon as it hits the bottom, it comes straight over onto the lift hill. We might just miss it or it could get us. Oh no, we're about to find out. Anticipation, you, oh, we're in the perfect place as well. We're gonna get it, folks. You built this up. I built it up now. Oh, we might be passing it. Oh, oh no. Oh. oh, no. We could get soaked now or we could have escaped. Oh. <laughs> yeah. There you go. It was worth the build up. I told you. <laughs> you shut me up. There you go. I did tell you I was building it up or something. There we go. Splash the two <laughs> Wetter than on the main drop. Oh, God. It comes over quite some force. I was telling Alex actually a few years ago uh, when I was here with Jack, my glasses went flying off into the boat on that at that point. I like the look of the rock work over there as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's a speaker. This used to erupt to this did, uh, but that effect's been broke for years now. But they used to play like a rumble sound effect. Well, that's just the, that's, and, uh, yeah, that's just the boat. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. But you can see all the pipes and stuff in here in a minute where it used to uh, erupt. Doesn't look great, really. That's not been working for a long time. Nah, not at all. At least the water's nice and clean on the ride, though. Oh, get ready for a splash. Here we go. Splash to two key. Uh oh. Oh, you'll be all right where we are. He says. Here we go. Shambhala Condor. Airtime. Not too bad. Not too bad. <laughs> yeah. And that's the hole in your trousers now. Air uh, shorts. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> there we go. Satuki splash at Port Ventura. We've done really well today for rides. Oh, that was a good one. I enjoy that. It's a good job, it's about 22 degrees. Here they come. Whee! And splash. Awesome. Just had a good ride then on Satuki splash. It's a nice ride that. It's a shame that the effects and things don't work at the top here like they used to. That really used to add to the overall experience. Chewing gum tunnels not looking as bad as it was in a few years ago, so that looks uh, a lot better. And uh, yeah, we were quite lucky there to actually get the splash going up the lift hill. I enjoyed that. How's the hole? Are you all right? I just got a bit of a breeze when it came past. Yeah, just a, the wrong place. a little bit of a breeze. Look, it's not got long to go until the end of the day. But uh, I've really enjoyed it today at Port Ventura. Operations, I've been really pleased with. That's been the main thing for me. I know I've gone on about it a bit, but uh, praise, you know, is due for this park today. It's a fair play to them, really. But yeah, this is a good water ride. It'd be nice if we had a bit of a soundtrack around here, a bit of music and things, and obviously get the effects back working. But it's still a really enjoyable ride here at Port Ventura Park. So there 
we go, we've made our way back down to Mediterranean, the entrance area of the park, after a fantastic day here at Port Aventura. It's been really good, we've got lots of rides in throughout the day. We've not done everything, but I think the only two major rides we've not done in the park is Hurricane Condor, the Intamin drop tower, because uh, obviously we joined the queue earlier on, it broke down. Uh, Alex was glad about that, weren't you? <laughs> I'll get him on it at some point over the next two days. No. Uh, and Angle, we didn't do Angle, which is a Mac ride splash battle, so we'll do that at some point as well. It's actually one of the best splash battles I've done lots of good theming and fantastic views of Shambhala from around the back of it as well. And um, yeah, this area is gorgeous. To be honest, with this party, you can get just as much enjoyment sitting here in Mediterranean or one of the other themed areas, listening to the music, looking out over the views, the theming, the landscaping, and of course, the fantastic coasters on the landscape as well. And um, yeah, we're about to watch the parade. It starts in about five minutes time. It starts over on the bridge at Far West, uh, makes its way all the way round underneath the turnaround section there on Furious Baco, uh, and then it ends just here. But a little tip for you with this one, uh, the parade itself is not very long, it's probably about five or six minutes. Uh, but it's nice that they do it, it's a good combination of the characters, normally Sesame Street characters, uh, a lot of the dancers and acrobats from the different shows all come down to it. Uh, but they also do like a stage show uh, just over there as well at the end. So basically all the floats come round, you don't really want to watch it past this point, especially past the stage on that last bit, um, because all the actors and things, some of them go off, other ones merge onto the stage, and then they do like a little dance show to end the day. Looks like it might be heavily focused on Woody to celebrate 20 years of him being at Port Ventura, because as you can see, they've got like the uh, Woody 20 years anniversary sign over there. But uh, I'll show you the parade coming up here at Port Ventura. It's a nice way to end the day. And I know I said this earlier on in the vlog when we was in Far West, but more theme parks back in the UK really need to think about entertainment. And I appreciate the fact that Alton Towers over the years has had a lot. It used to have the ice show. In fact, it used to have a parade back in the good old days. I mean, even I don't remember that one. I think it stopped in like the mid 90s. Obviously I was born in 93, so I think it stopped around that time. Um, but yeah, over the years, I've seen lots of new bits. I mean, the ice show ended in 2006 there. Uh, there's been stuff at Camelot over the years, American Adventure, even Thorpe Park used to have a big stunt show, but a lot of it just seems to have died out over the years, which is a shame. Obviously hot ice at Blackpool Pleasure Beach still remains our best theme park show really in our country. Um, but yeah, there's a lot more to be desired for in terms of entertainment. But they say that back home in the parks say there's no de demand for it. But when you come over here to all these parks, such as Disneyland Paris, Europa Park, Fantasyland, uh, Port Ventura, uh, they all do these big shows and things at the end of the day to leave a really nice impression uh, on guests before they leave the park. But uh, anyway, here we go. I'll show you some footage of the parade and the little show on the stage here to end our day at Port Ventura.
you've just seen some footage of the parade and the little show they do on the stage there at the end. Like I say, don't come here expecting it to be a Disney parade because it's not. But it's got its own unique charm to it. It's a combination of a lot of the characters and cast from the different shows across the park that all come together and put that, just a little, a, a kiss goodnight as Disney would say with that, isn't it really? You know, you all get the exit to the park you and then the leave after nine it, times. Yeah. Great. Yeah, yeah, nine times. It, it, it loops that parade music and then you get the Woody song. But uh, there you go, we to the end of our day one vlog from Port Aventura Park. It's been a really nice day today. I've been really impressed with how the park looks. Uh, there's not much graffiti and things around, uh, which is great. Uh, a lot of the things have been painted up, buildings, rides look really fresh and jet washed. And uh, just in general, I think the park looks really good. Operations wise, two trains on Shambhala, uh, and that was obviously my highlight of the day, getting back on my number two now coaster. And uh, Wildfire still sits there at number one though, but Shambhala, what a brilliant coaster, b and Hyper. And I can't believe it's its seventh year in operation this year at the park. Uh, also good to get back on some of my other favourites today. Didn't get to ride on Condor, uh, but hopefully we'll do that tomorrow. And uh, he's cheering over here, he's got his arms in the air. But so uh, yeah, you know my thoughts on the park. I love it, I really enjoy it. It's one of my favourite parks out there. Uh, but it's Alex's first time, uh, well, first proper time doing the rides here anyway. And uh, yeah, what, what did you think to it in general? I love the park, it's a beautiful park. I want to come back many more times. Play come tomorrow and Thursday. Oh, that sounds yeah. good. <laughs> Win. Uh, yeah, it's really, really lovely. I uh, think it's a very charming park. And yes, it might not be very old, but I think it's, it's, it's quite beautiful. I'd love to see a lot more done to the park. I like to see it grow in size. Maybe get another theme land or area in, that, in the main park. Yeah, definitely. Finish that park off beautifully, to be honest. And then, to me, it's probably one of the nicer resorts in Europe. It is, it's lovely. And there's some good hotels and things here as well. Some lovely accommodation. The water park's great. That's open from May to September. And uh, Ferrari Land's not quite as good as that park. But don't get me wrong, there's still some nice theming in there that I think you'll enjoy. There's always room for improvement in the greatest theme parks in the world. There's always room for improvement. But there's no theme park out there that's perfect. There were some things at uh, Tokyo Disney Sea that is me and Alex's joint favourite park. Unbelievable. Uh, there's still some bits there that we, you know, we, like the fact there's no, not really a major coaster, so to speak. We were talking about this earlier on. Really, obviously you've got a little junior coaster and then you've got Indiana Jones. So really, it, just, it lacks a major coaster in that park. But we love it still so much because of the atmosphere and theme. You can play with a bit one of them things. Up well, there. that's the thing, you know. Yeah, I mean, there's some things with Red Force. It looks great from out here. I don't like the views of it from inside Port Aventura Park. I feel like it's taken a bit away from Mediterranean, and it's like the water slide what they built in uh, the Caribbean Aquatic Park a few years ago. It just takes away from the views of Far West. Uh, but overall, I'm impressed today. I'd say that the park looks better and is running better than when me and Charlotte were here a year ago. Uh, certainly, really good operations today. I was and, uh, from a highlight of the day. The highlight of the day for Alex. What's it been? Obviously, it's a shame he couldn't get on the barber, but it's not the end well, of it. I was going to say, my highlight of the day is definitely, definitely, definitely Shambhala's exit pathway. Yeah. I just spent so much time there yeah. today. <laughs> I have to give it an honourable mention. We're we'll staying up the operator, them staring back at me. It's not the end of the world, though, because I do think that there is still a chance if there's another member of staff on there uh, on the next couple of days. So we'll soon find out. What's been your favourite ride Sean in the park? making me jog home so I can get a bit of a. Uh, <laughs> Go on, get uh, running. Hey, sorry. Get running. Go. Yeah. So, so uh, <laughs> my highlight of the day was definitely Dragon Khan. I think it's a very, very good B&M coaster. And I think <laughs> with the views all around the park, it's just stunning. Everything was really beautiful. Now I'm get off. running, get running, get running. Right, we'll see you tomorrow when we're back at Port Ventura. Come on, keep it going. You know, <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow. We'll be back at Port Ventura Park and also Ferrari Land as well. Doing a bit of both parks tomorrow in our day two and, vlog. And you're going to want to check the vlog out because I've got a surprise for sure. Yeah, he he's telling know. me there's some sort of surprise. I don't know what it is. It's happening tomorrow morning, is it? First so it'll be right morning. at the start of tomorrow's vlog. So whatever that is, I hope you enjoy it. I hope I enjoy it. And for Port Ventura Park, that means it's time to cue those Turn credits. Oh. See you later, guys.